How's it guys? This is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'll be going over my final team selection for the upcoming Game Week 15. So as you guys are watching this video and as I'm recording a few hours till that actual Game Week 15 deadline, and the reason I'm actually releasing this video and not streaming is that I'm actually playing footy tonight. Now I should be finished with about 30 minutes to go till the deadline, so we'll be replying to you guys over my Discord server if you are a Legend member, and I'll be discussing my final team selection in this video. So we're going to start off with a quick review of Game Week 14. If you guys missed the transfer plan yesterday, I'll then dive into my transfer plan. I didn't make a transfer last night, so I'll discuss the move I probably will make. And the last part of the video will be my final team for the upcoming deadline. So if that's something you guys are interested in, sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So as mentioned, a quick review of Game Week 14 is on the cards. A pretty strong Game Week for ourselves, 69 points, and a green arrow to just blow the 400k mark. Now in the comments down below, how did your game week go? Has that influenced your kind of quick decisions for the quick turnaround to game week 15? And did you guys get a red arrow, green arrow, and were you sitting in the overall ranks? So no bench points this week. We had Strakosha for 0, Archer for 1, Lachelles for 6, and Gay for 2. So only really the Newcastle clean sheet that we missed out on. Between the sticks, we had Ariola for 2 points, a pretty disappointing game week once again. Blanking to Burnley and then Crystal Palace back-to-back -back is pretty disappointing. I honestly don't know when West Ham are going to keep a clean sheet in the future. At least in our back three, we had the saviour, the man in the middle, Charlie Taylor, for a massive 10 pointer, an assist, a clean sheet, and some bonus points in that 5 0 victory for Burnley over Sheffield United. So, an absolute hero for our defence, as you guys can see, Gabriel and Saliba both ended up blanking after a Zinchenko defensive mistake lost in the clean sheet in the 86th minute. So, Charlie Taylor's an absolute hero, as mentioned, great gaming from him, and just super happy that we ended up playing him. Then in the midfoot apartment, we had some strong returners. We had Mbumo and Salah both racking up an assist. A little bit unlucky for you Salah captainers. He could have had a massive haul in this one, but I guess that is how it is sometimes. Then Human Son with the massive performance against Man City. The bogey team for Man City is definitely going to be Spurs, and they showed that with that effective counter-attack, scoring two goals from a relatively low amount of XG. Son also scored an own goal, but at least got an assist, so that kind of evened out. Then Saka had a strong game week, uh, scoring a goal in that victory against Wolves, and he's actually looked a lot better in game week 14. Then the new transfers in, and Bumo and Palmer came in for a Dengra and also Bowen, so we net gained on those transfers, which I always love to see. Then our forward department, our captain Erling Haaland missed an absolute sitter, then he could have got an assist at the end of the fixture for that controversial, as you guys would have known, advantage call. So like Salah could have had an absolute haul here, but at least we captained the right option, even though it was only two points. Then keeping hold of Ollie Watkins proved to be very effective. He got an assist and a goal with his yellow flag. But if you asked to come out for Darwin, I can perfectly understand that decision. So the Ollie Watkins kind of differential points after a lot of managers took him out, combining that with Charlie Taylor and a strong midfoot performance, got us that nice green arrow to about the 400k mark. As mentioned in the comments down below, how did your game week go? Always love to see how you guys are keeping up. Now let's head on to that game week 15 transfer plan. So I want to start off the transfer plan by saying no, I've done no transfers yet. I didn't make that transfer for Dubravka or Kelleher last night. Both of those players ended up rising. I just wanted some more information and the press conferences coming up today. So if you guys have seen the press conferences, nothing much or nothing material has come about. It seems like Cole Palmer should be fine for the upcoming game week. And most other popular assets look pretty fine. So with one free transfer and 0.6 in the bank, I can do a slight upgrade. And there's one option that most managers are actually going for this week. So yes, Dubravka is definitely on my transfer plan at the current moment. The reason for this is no, it's not because every manager is bringing him in. It's the fact that it's kind of a no-brainer. Getting a cheap goalkeeper, especially for Newcastle, is almost a must. So if you guys haven't seen the news, Nick Pope dislocated his shoulder in Game Week 14, and Dubravka should be the natural replacement. Now yes, 100% Newcastle could sign a new goalkeeper in January, either on loan or a new signing, but I just believe Dubravka is going to have a strong performance over the next month, and they're going to win the spot. So I think what this comes down to is almost like a Lachelles or a Livramento. If you guys can get the Newcastle defence for so cheap, you might as well do it. Now fixtures upcoming, you'll probably bench him next week against Spurs, but against Everton and Fulham, you'll definitely play him, and Newcastle have a nice run after that. Now the big question if you guys are going to go for Dubravka is who you should replace. For my own team, it's either Ariola or Strakosha, and if you guys watched my transfer plan yesterday, you'll know that Ariola and Dubravka actually rotate quite nicely. I think when Newcastle have a tough run of Man City, Liverpool, and then Aston Villa, West Ham have decent fixtures that you can rotate them with. Now, yes, most game weeks, you'll probably look to play Dubravka, Newcastle definitely the better defence than West Ham, and I know that because I've owned Areola for a few game weeks now. 
So for my team, it's going to be Strakosha out for Dubrovka. That'll cost me 0.1 as I didn't do it last night. And I'll confirm this closer to the deadline as I'm going to see if we get some early team sheet news. Now, if you guys could see another transfer that I could potentially make, I could also roll the transfer. I just believe that Dubrovka is a no-brainer. So if you guys have two free transfers, I would do it. And if you have one free transfer, I think it's still worth it. But you guys let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I've seen some managers not going for Dubrovka this week. That's 100% understandable. Not much can be gained from a goalkeeper transfer, but when you're dealing with Ariola, anything is going to be bonus. So now let's head on to that actual final team selection. I'm just going to assume that I do the Dubrovka move closer to the deadline, and that's going to leave us with 0.5 in the bank. So at least in the future game weeks, we can make an upgrade if we see so. Always nice to have a little bit of extra cash in the bank. So starting off on our bench, and you can see that Ariola is going to be relegated to the bench position. He has Spurs away, and that's a tough game. Now between Gay and Charlie Taylor, both have adequate games from a defensive point of view. But I just feel like both Bournemouth and Wolves will score, and therefore I prefer my starting three. Then in terms of Archer, even though Liverpool can't buy a clean sheet, Kelleher doesn't look that great. I'm not super confident in Sheffield United, even though they have a new manager bounce. So if Ariola is on the bench, obviously Dubrovka is between the sticks. He has Everton away. This might be a tougher game on paper than most people are seeing, as that Everton attack has been pretty good. I've actually gone for the double up in that Newcastle defence. I've got Lachelle's in the middle as well. So fingers crossed they keep a clean sheet. I just feel like Newcastle are pretty good defence. Yes, Everton's attack is looking strong, but I could also see a clean sheet here for Newcastle. Then another double up I've gone for in my defence is going to be the Arsenal double up of Saliba and Gabriel against Luton away. And also like Everton, on paper looks good, but in reality this is actually a tough one. So fingers crossed Arsenal and Newcastle keep a clean sheet because then we're going to be absolutely laughing and hopefully a sign of a strong game week. Now midfoot apartment's going to start off with that new manager bounce. Mo Salah is facing Sheffield United away. I just believe on paper the most obvious captain for gaming 15. And finally I can watch Liverpool game and actually hope that Salah scores. So yes, we might see the new manager bounce. We might see some magic overnight turning Sheffield United into a good defence. But I just believe out of my attackers, I'm going to put the armband on Mo Salah. Human Son could also be an option for Kamsi, but I believe that might be quite a cagey game. But I still expect Son to do quite well. Same could be said about Saka, he's facing the worst defence at the moment, Luton, but I think I trust Salah more than Saka. Then we have the new chances in, in Bumo against Brighton, and also Cole Palmer against United. I believe Cole Palmer should start and should be fine. With that Gallagher suspension, he might play in midfield, and I believe he's no longer a doubt. Now both these two fixtures, Brighton and United, are actually good ones on paper, would have preferred if they were home games, but I think Brentford and Chelsea can score in both. Then our front line is going to be Erling Haaland against Aston Villa and then Oli Watkins against Man City. So yes, these two strikers are playing against each other. And if Haaland's ownership's under 100%, I hope this is an absolute goal fest. Now yes, Oli Watkins against Man City might not look that great on paper, but without Rodri, I believe that they can still do well. And that Aston Villa attack has been pretty good. So as you guys can see, my starting 11 is looking pretty good. I believe that the Ariola to Dubrovka kind of rotation was worth it. I believe Newcastle have the better chance of a clean sheet. And I think Mo Salah is the most sensible captain. Now in the comments down below, who's your captain for the upcoming game week? Are you going for Son, Saka or even Haaland? Or are you going for the safe option like me? Also let me know your transfer plans for the upcoming game week. If you're not going for Dubrovka, are you making another transfer? Or are you simply rolling it and saving it for a rainy day? But as mentioned, no deadline stream coming up, but I will be posting my team before the deadline. But if I don't see you again, let's hope the green arrow is in our favour. This is basically going to wrap up the video guys. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you did and subscribe if you have subscribed yet. And I'll see you guys for that Game Week 16 deadline fairly shortly. But for the time being, I'm going to sign off. It's been Dave FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.